What's going on everybody today? I'm gonna to do a quick video on um, plotting continuous data as a line graph essentially. It's just gonna be a curve. Um, so I've got some data that I've been working with. It's ground reaction forces during a task where we're perturbing people's uh, posture and then we're seeing whether or not they, they take a step to recover their balance. And so I'm gonna load that data in here and just give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, I've got the time constant, or not the time constant, but the time here. Uh, we're collecting these data from a force platform at 1000 hertz. So that's what this time uh, column is. And then we've got the mean. So this is the mean across uh, this particular group of individuals and the standard deviation across that same group. And if I just scroll down a bit, uh, what you'll eventually see is that the group changes. So you can see right there it changed. Um, and we've got three different groups and they're stacked up like this way so that we can um, group them inside of ggplot. All right, so let's go ahead and plot these data and see what they look like. Again, what we're doing is we're taking individuals, they're standing still, and then we're perturbing their gait and we're seeing whether or not they step and we're capturing ground reaction forces during that task. It's really not that important uh, for what we're doing today because I'm just trying to show people how to plot this time series kind of data. So we're gonna say ggplot and we're gonna call in the data frame that we wanna use, and then we're gonna specify our axes using this AES, um, which stands for aesthetics, and we're going to say Y is equal to time, or X rather is equal to time, and Y is going to be equal to means. And then we're also gonna color, we want, because we've got three groups, we wanna group and then color um, each of these lines based on their group allocation within that my data data frame. And so we're gonna say color is equal to group. And this is going to tell ggplot um, to color each line by uh, its group allocation. And in R, what you have to do is you have to make sure that the group is a data type factor, right? So sometimes you'll pull in data like this and this will come in as a character and you have to convert it to a, um, a, a data type factor before you uh, can call it in as a grouping parameter. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is call in the plot type. In this case, it's going to be geom line. And uh, yeah, let's run this and see what it looks like. I'm using RStudio, so we'll be plotting down here in the right-hand corner. There it is, you can see it's kind of ugly right now, but you see we're starting to get our, our, uh, our plot. So we've got yeah, each of the three groups and they're all colored differently. Um, but this looks really ugly, so I'm going to do a few things here. Uh, you know, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I like this classic theme. And then I'm going to change a few other things too. So we'll say um, we want the axes titles and the element text. This is going to be the, a the actual titles of the elements, the text there. And we'll say we want a font size of uh, 20, and then we'll call boldface. And then we also want to do axis uh, text. So these are going to be the actual values along the axis. And again, we're going to call in that element text. We'll give these size uh, 14. We'll make sure that they're uh, black text. Okay, the other thing that I want to do is I want to make these lines a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go up into geom line and I'm going to call uh, LWD, which is line width, and I'm going to set that equal to 2. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this now. There we go. Starting to look a little bit better. Um, these are anterior posterior or four aft ground reaction forces, where everything positive means that the ground reaction force is oriented positively. Everything negative means that it's oriented um, posteriorly. So, one thing to make that a little bit clearer would be to add just a horizontal line across zero. Well, that's uh, really easy in ggplot. We just call in geom h line and we give it a y intercept of zero. And uh, we can plot this as a thinner line, so we'll call it 0.5, and then we'll specify the color as um, black. All right, there we go. So we're starting to get there. Uh, 
Another thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make the legend a little bit clearer. So we're going to call in legend text and we're going to do the same thing. So element text. We'll say that this is also going to be equal to uh, 14. We'll make sure that the color is correct. Okay, that's good. And then we'll call in the legend title. Make that look a little bit nicer. And we're going to keep this at size 14 as well. But in order to let it stand out a little bit, we will uh, we'll also make it bold. Okay, let's take a look. A lot of this is cosmetic, but it's nice to make these look nice. There we go. So you see we're starting to get a pretty nice looking um, figure here. Now, the first thing that I don't like is that the group allocation is actually just taking the factor levels um, from our data frame. And if you try to publish this, people are going to say, like, what is adapter underscore non underscore step? So we're going to want to change that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this kind of the long way, but that's all right. Uh, so I'm going to say my data. I'm going to call in our group column. And before I can change this, I actually need to convert it from a factor into a character value, change it, and then convert it back into a factor before we start plotting. So I'm going to say my data group as character. And then I'm just going to call in that same column. Okay, so this line of code is going to convert that group column into a character data type. Once it's a data uh, type, what we can do is we can say my data group where my data group is equal to, uh, let's do this one first, adapter non step. And then we just change this to what we want it to be, which we'll say, uh, adapter non stepping trial so this is a like a this is um, the group level is adapter and then this this is when they were perturbed and didn't have to take a step to recover their balance and we're going to do this for all three groups so I'll just copy this and paste it twice and then we'll change these as needed so the next one is adapter step okay and then the last one is non adapter step so we'll put non adapter step non adapter stepping so let's let's go ahead and run all of this okay and now those have actually changed inside of my data so now if we go in and look at the group now we can actually see that those values have changed but it's still a character and again when we come down here and we want to color by group that needs to be a factor so what I'm going to do is call in my data group. And now instead of as character, as we did up here on line eight, we're going to say as factor. And we're going to convert this column back into a factor data type. So I'll run that, run our plot again. <clears throat> and you can see now the legend has changed. OK, the next thing I want to do, I've got the means plotted. The next thing I want to do is plot our standard deviation. So I want a nice little ribbon around each line also colored by its group allocation um, plus or minus one standard deviation. Now this is also quite easy in ggplot. So to do this I'm going to call in geome ribbon and I'm going to give it aesthetics of um, a y minimum which will be equal to means minus stds which is our standard deviations. Then I'm going to give it a y max equal to means plus our standard deviations. And then I'm going to say color is equal to group. Uh, the next thing I want to do is give it a um, opacity, because I don't want it to be a solid color. If I just do this now, it's going to be a solid color. I want to make it kind of shaded so that these lines stick out. So I can say uh, fill will be equal to, and actually up here I don't want color by group. I want fill by group. <clears throat> so down here what I want uh, instead of fill is alpha is going to be equal to 0 0.2. So this should give us uh, ribbons around each of these lines. Hey, look at that. 
All right, so we got that. Um, let's see, do we want to do anything else? Uh, we're already kind of running it uh, a bit long. You know, one thing that you might, well, one thing that you should definitely do is you should go in here and you can change X label uh, to time, and then you would change your Y label to whatever your variable is. In this case, it's um, our anterior posterior ground reaction forces in Newtons. So let's do that, and then uh, for the sake of time, I'll go ahead and end the video. All right, there we go. Let's zoom in on it, let everyone see it. All right, so this is a, a really nice way to just um, plot continuous time series data um, using ggplot2. All right, if you like this video, go ahead and uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find a lot of my code already up on GitHub. Uh, you can find my academic work on ResearchGate. And of course, you can keep watching me here on YouTube. All right, until next time, keep coding.